kind of knowing what the softening point is or where they soften up is good. What I can do now is I'll let that kind of warm up a little bit. position same as the measuring position or is it a bit different? Trim position now is actually a little bit above it but it runs back down. Normal force grows a lot. You can see so this stuff expands and contracts. Right now I'm just playing around with trying to get the sample in there to get it in. You notice, so it looks like it melts somewhere between 65 and 70, yeah. right? It gets really soft. Um, I want it to have good intimate contact between those two plates. So, uh, right, and I know it's a wax. I can kind of start with this. I'm not too worried about it being a thermal history in there. Um, if if we were really running at 25 degrees and you wanted to run your sample there, what you could do is just take it, load it at 25, just come down and make some slight contact with it. In this case, I'd be worried though because this wax is going to be a lot of slipping, right? So I figured, hey, in the asphalt industry, what you should do is just warm it up, load it at a higher temperature, trim it, bring it down to a lower temperature, and let it get cold. These tend to expand or contract. I can kind of see this, and that, like, see here, my normal force, that's the force pushing back up on it. It's lower at higher temperature. Nice and soft there. Um, but as I go to lower temperatures, it gets harder. Right? I'm going to uh, play around a little bit. This is what we have to do, kind of figure out how to run this one. Uh, 
It's at a low normal force now, so I'm just going to hit reset normal force. So what I did was, uh, I think when we go down to 25, it's going to get really hard. It's going to push up. It's going to expand. So what I'm going to do is about running with normal force control. I don't want that that sample is just going to get too stressed sitting in there. So I'm going to say, hey, keep the normal force zero. As it starts to expand, the head should move up a little bit, right? And when you're running it softer, it should follow it. How do I do that? Yeah. I tell it, um, one, we didn't talk about this yet, but there's a way to do gap setting. And the gap setting protocol I'm using over here is called USC1, right? Once I've set this up, you guys probably won't have to play with it too much. But I loaded it here. I click change. What that means is it loads them all into manual settings. When it's in it, USC1 is in manual settings. Now I can come down here and I can edit it, right? And so for the measuring system, I said, OK, I want a normal force hysteresis of plus or minus 0.5 newtons, right? Clicked OK. And then I click Save As. And now I'm saving it back as USC1. So now those are, uh, those are changed. go back to the control panel and make sure that the gap setting protocol for USC1, because that's going to have my new hiss window. I'm actually going to come down here and do it. I turned on normal force control, which basically meant I clicked in this box over here. If you look on the side, there's a few different boxes, right? What these are saying is like, hey, if you're running a rotational test, you set it up here by um, shear rate control, rotational test stress control. We're doing an oscillatory test, and we're doing it strain control, right? The other thing we can do is say, okay, for running that test, how are we going to run it? Do you want normal force control? Do you want it to track normal force? And I'm going to say, yeah. So I turn that on and I said, okay, make it zero. Click okay. All right. So now what's going to happen is my test is going to do an amplitude sweep from 0.01 to 100%, right? So it's going to start at 0.01 and go up to 100% strain. Right, so if I'm at a one millimeter gap, it's going to start at 0.01 millimeters, go up to one millimeter. Right, um, six points per decade. That at 25 degrees, this is going to be pretty stiff. I doubt it'll even get up to there. You know, I might be able to do it uh, quite lower. But what I'm going to do is I'll just leave it there for right now. And then at a fixed frequency of 10 radians per second. Right. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to say, hey, I'm up here at this nice high temperature. I know I want to run at 25 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'm going to put it, I'm uh, testing this on this wax sample. Test for wax. Um, I want to set a temperature and I want to wait a time before I run. So I'm going to set my temperature at 25 degrees C. I'm going to have my checking time be something like, hey, I want it to be stable for five minutes, plus or minus 0.1 degrees before I run, right? And time out if it takes up longer than 30 minutes to get there. Um, you can also put a waiting time. In this case, I'm going to have no waiting time. But I will go back here and you know, put some information in. So for instance here, it always starts off with AS, and I'm calling this one a test wax. I'm going to highlight that, click copy. Why? Because when I click start test now, I'll just put that same name in here and hit paste. So when a template is called an ORT file, when you do a run, it's called a workbook and it puts it as an ORX. So it'll save this as amplitude sweep test wax. Under a folder, if you look here, it's my documents Anton Parr Rail Plus. So it saves everything. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. When it does that, it'll start the test.